The Nashville Predators get back in the win column, four to two over the Vancouver Canucks. Full recap of that game coming up. Plus one under the radar guy, I think, had a really good game. And, you know, a couple of obvious people who had really good games. We'll talk about how the Preds got the win. Plus, is there a team in the Western Conference you don't want to face in the playoffs if you're a Preds fan? That is going to be the subject of today's Western Conference Wednesday. All fun stuff coming up today on Locked on Predators. Your Locked on Predators, your daily podcast on the Nashville Predators. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Happy Olympic Hockey Eve, everybody, and thank you for joining us here today on Locked on Predators. Thank you, as always, for making us your first listen of the day. I'm Nick Morgan. I'm a writer and editor at OnTheForeCheck.com, and I have a partner in crime who is ready to see uh, USA women pull off back-to-back gold medals this year. I am. I cannot wait for the puck to drop on Olympic hockey. I'm Ann Kimmel. I'm a writer at On the Forecheck. Yeah, we're going to give a little bit of a preview of the uh, Olympic hockey, both men's and women's side tomorrow. Uh, but we have equally fun stuff to talk about today. And because the Predators won. Yes. That, Hallelujah. It's always much easier to do an upbeat podcast when the Predators <laughs> win as it is when they're losing games to the Buffalo Sabres or whatnot. Uh, oh, so, yeah. Um, yeah. Overall, a, you know, a mixed bag for the Nashville Predators. I don't think it's one that's going to be on their year-end highlight reel, but it's one of those that I think they did just enough to win. Uh, it was 2-2 at the end of the first period, and then the Predators just kind of turned on the afterburners from there. Goals from Philip Forsberg, Tanner Janot put the Predators up for good. Uh Almost an empty net goal at the end. Oh, we'll so play. close. We will talk about that in a second. But first, we start as always. And what is your one word to describe last night's Predators win? Okay, so I debated whether to go music theme or food theme. And I'm hungry enough that I'm going to go food theme because I have the perfect food that just encapsulates that win last night. And it's strawberry pretzel salad. And I don't know. Have you ever had strawberry pretzel salad, Nick? No, but uh, I'm intrigued. So keep going. Oh, my goodness. Strawberry pretzel salad. This is my like if I was on death row and they said, what's your last meal? I'd be like, bring me a nine by 13 of strawberry pretzel salad and watch some things happen. Um, It is the best. Your escape from death row. Oh, that's it's. It is, I don't know if it would help me escape, but I would die happy because this is hands down my all-time favorite food. There is nothing I like more than strawberry pretzel salad. All right. But I like it because it's sweet and salty. So it's, the crust is pretzels and butter, which right there, always a win. So you've got kind of your salty and then you have a middle layer that's cream cheese and Cool Whip and sugar. And then you have a top layer that is uh, strawberry jello and strawberries. So you've got this salty and you've got this sweet and it's literally the greatest thing ever. And that for me was the game last night. You know, you had your salty. I think the Predators, especially in the second and third period, really turned on the physical play. We had Mark Borowiecki absolutely launch Ekman Larson into a whole nother atmosphere. Bless. Um, so you had, you know, you definitely had your salty, but you had your sweet. You had Philip Forsberg with two goals in the team rallying, desperately trying to get him a hat trick. And you had um, a goal by the herd line, which is something that we've talked about. And UC Saros had a milestone. So for me, that was just the perfect sweet and salty game. It was absolute perfection. I could watch that game. It's like my last hockey game on death row. So I'm going to go and look up strawberry pretzel salad because it sounds intriguing. Oh, it's it sounds yeah. not as nearly as good as it is, but it's it's almost like I would take that over Duchess cookies and that's saying Ooh. something. Do we need to hand out strawberry casserole on Fridays then? I mean, well, we save that for, you know, like we win the Stanley Cup, it's strawberry pretzel salad for everyone. Okay. Yeah. Um my one word Anne, is ka-ching. 
<laughs> that was, that was Philip Forsberg's bank account is going to be making in a couple of months. And this game was a textbook example of why. Yes. This might be something we should have saved for uh, Hot Take Tuesday. But last night was one of the best all-around games I've seen Philip Forsberg play yes. in a very long time. Um, and you know, the two goals, obviously, you know, he scored more goals in a game many times before, right. but you know, so stats wise, it's not going to jump out, but just watching him play and, you know, him kind of getting into dirty areas, him setting up plays, um, him drawing a couple of penalties just by kind of, you know, making a smart play and beating a Vancouver defender, you know, yes. he was just on a different level last night and it really showed, um, whenever he was on the ice, that is to me when the Predators look like they're most dynamic, when it looked like the most, mm -hmm. you know, you watch them and say, OK, this is a team that I think legitimately could do some damage in a playoff series down the line. It was when Forsberg was out there. And you know what? Yes. You look at kind of, you know, the stats from the past few years. Uh, the Predators are always at their best whenever Forsberg's on the ice. I think mm -hmm. this year just it's a perfect storm of a lot of different things happening but you know he's he showed it last night it's just when he's on the ice the predators look borderline unbeatable yes I mean, and it's it's yeah he's going to get paid <laughs> I, I, I hope it's nashville mm -hmm. Oh uh, my gosh, I cannot uh, imagine what will happen in this city if it's not by Nashville. But he's he's padding his resume for sure. And you know what? The, the thing about Forsberg is, you know, I know a lot of people are like, well, the Preds have to convince Forsberg that he's going to want to stay, that he's going to want to be a part of this team. Forsberg himself kind of had something to prove at the beginning of this year because, you know, yes. it's always the stigma around him. You know, he kind of went cold for long periods of time, um, always injured, you know, sort of this, you know, good player who could be great, but always, you know, never could seem to take that next step. Um, he has shattered all of those doubts this year. Oh, yes. And yes. Assuming he keeps up this pace um, that he's on right now, assuming he kind of keeps this up, um, yeah, I, I think he's proven what type of player he can be when the Predators themselves are firing on all cylinders. Well, and I think, you know, the good thing that Nashville has done is I think that they have made a good case. This team has put together a good case for why Philip Forsberg would want to stay and sign here. Because let's face it, this is somebody who you know he's hungry, you know he wants to win a cup, you know he wants to be competitive on it, you know, he wants to be on a team that's going to compete. And if we're being honest, the last couple of seasons, I'm not sure that you can sell that. Uh, but the way that the team is playing now, and I think so much of this, and I've said it before, and I will say it again, is I think credit to John Hines for getting the buy-in and getting this team to realize when we're all pulling in the same direction, when we're all working and playing the same style of hockey, really good things can happen. And I think the team has set themselves up to really make a good ploy or a good plug for, hey, Philip, stay here. We've got something going here that can get you what you want. So I think things are are looking good. Of course, I, you hate to you hate to get your hopes up because it's hockey. But I agree with you. I mean, Philip Forsberg just is adding zeros to a paycheck the way he's playing. I thought for sure he was going to get that empty net goal. At the oh, end. Another, the Preds tried so hard. <laughs> And get that empty net goal that they were making plays. It's like, what? Like in a normal situation, it'd be like, that was dumb. And then you wait and it's like, oh, wait, they're trying to give Forsberg the hat trick. They yeah. Were, they were playing so <laughs> counterintuitively in that, you know, they're, you know, the last half just to get, try to get him that empty net goal. Yes. Um, it was like, and the fans knew it too. The, it was oh, funny. they all had their hands on their hats. Yeah. Like the fans were like, come on. Yeah. So when the Matt Duchesne pass went wide off of Philip Forsberg's stick, the sound the crowd made <laughs> was akin <laughs> to missing a game winning open net overtime goal in game seven of the Stanley Cup final. Yes. That yes. Was, 
well from the crowd. And then it's the same thing, a turnover went right to Forsberg's stick, but he didn't realize it in time. And then the Canucks made the play, and it was that same uh, <laughs> giant kind of, oh, from the crowd. Uh, it was so crushing. <laughs> it was. Um, but yeah, I mean, that kind of goes to show you just how much the fans wanted it for him too. Yes. And uh, you know, how much they kind of recognized he played a great game. Yes, for sure. Yeah. And I think the fans are so grateful and thankful for what they're able to see on the ice, the on ice product that the predators are putting together this season and the fans, I think across the board, the fans want Forsberg here. So yeah, everybody is pulling, was pulling. They were willing that puck to go in, but we'll just save it because I have a sneaky suspicion if Philip Forsberg continues the way he is, he'll get himself some hats in no time. Oh yeah. He's already gotten four this year in a game. So yeah, why uh, not? Yeah. Lots of precedent there. There's another player from last night's game that I thought had a sneaky really good game and it's not somebody we've talked a lot uh well actually it is somebody we've talked a lot about but not for good reasons uh so i want to make sure we give a shout out there uh but before we do want to give a shout out to our friends at built bar built bar is a protein bar that tastes like a candy bar sometimes even better than a candy bar so if you're not a huge fan of eating healthy you can at least eat something that tastes good and is good for you. That way, when you enjoy a delicious Built Bar, you can almost count it as a workout. Uh, Built Bar makes it easier to stick to your resolution because it tastes so good, you'll actually want to eat it. And there's so many flavors to choose from. Coconut almond, peanut butter brownie, raspberry cookies and cream, salted caramel, mint brownie, cherry barcia. They have a churros puffs flavor uh, that looks very intriguing to try. Definitely want to go for that. They've had an eggnog flavor in the past that I think both me and Anne are kind of curious about. Uh, so make sure you try all the flavors for yourself. Most built bars are low in calories, low in sugar, low in net carbs, but all high in protein. And they're all covered in 100% real chocolate. If you don't want our word for it, go to built.com, use promo code LOCKED15 and try it for yourself. Code, code LOCKED15 gets you 15% off your order. Again, use that promo code LOCKED15 for 15% off at built.com. Well, as we mentioned, uh, Winter Olympic hockey starts tomorrow. Yes. Ann and I are going to be talking a little bit about that and maybe some predictions. Uh, for both the men's and women's side, maybe some sneaky players to watch. This mm -hmm. this sounds like your cup of tea, Anne. I am so excited. Like, I'm an Olympic freak. Like, I almost always have an Olympic opening ceremonies party, and we have food from around the, you know, around the world, and we just have a whole big ruckus and brouhaha when USA and Latvia come on the TV. So I am, like, so geared up and ready because you have Olympics and you have hockey and we're just ready to talk about it all. Yeah. And even even though the men's NHL players aren't yeah. in it, um, yeah. there's still a lot to be excited about, more so than I think in Pyeongchang. Yes, I would agree with you. And and I think it even despite the NHL players not participating, there are some really, really great storylines uh, for both the men's and women's side that are going to be worth following and, and watching. So it's going to be really exciting. Yeah, for sure. That's coming up tomorrow morning. Uh, still business to take care of from this game. Uh, Predators beat the Vancouver Canucks 4-2. Their last game for eight days. So, yes. hey, vacation time. That's um, right. Yeah, and one person that I want to give a shout out to that I thought had a sneaky good game. How about Phil Myers? Totally had that in my notes. Yes. Yeah, that that kind of came out of nowhere. Uh, Matt Benning wasn't able to play last night, so Phil Myers comes in. We talked a lot about Phil Myers this season, not always for the best reasons. First, it was mm -hmm. why isn't he getting playing time? Then he got playing time, and it was, oh, this yeah. time doesn't look that great. <laughs> then he was benched again. Then we started kind of debating whether the whole Ryan Ellis trade was a bust. But he came out last night, and I thought Ann played a really solid game on mm -hmm. both ends of the ice. Yes, I had the exact same thing down from that game. He was one of the players. Obviously, um, Philip Forsberg stood out. But besides, <clears throat> besides Philip Forsberg, I thought Phil Myers had one of the best games we've seen from him in 
you know, he has been a healthy scratch at times this season. It's really been, like you said, it's been kind of a difficult journey for him. But on both offense, you know, he had the assist on the Philip Forsberg tip-in goal. And that shot was fire. Um, I thought that was great. But such good defense, really in there, up against the boards, playing responsible defense. I don't feel like we saw very many defensive breakdowns at all last night, which was kind of nice because we've had some games that were really bad. Um, So, yeah, Phil, I thought Phil Myers really uh, came in and played a solid, strong game. Yeah, and you'd know John Hines noticed that too because in the last minute when the Canucks had the empty net and were kind of swarming around the Preds' goal, Myers was out there for a couple of shifts. So John Hines obviously recognized that and said, you know what, he's playing a pretty good defensive game. We trust him to be out there. Now, obviously that's, um, you know, Benning's kind of normal situation, um, Mm -hmm. but he did and he played pretty well 15 minutes of ice time last night which is pretty solid for a player and yes yeah and and i thought if this was kind of an audition of hey you know what i'm kind of trending in the right direction Mm -hmm. this is it like he he certainly was noticeable on both ends of the ice in positive ways Yes. And another player that I think was really good to see on the ice again was Dante Fabro. And we had talked a little bit about him coming back in and how he is really part of a a key to the defense playing responsible. And it was great to see him out there. I thought, again, we saw responsible defense. We saw Dante Fabro back to the Dante Fabro we were used to seeing. And can we talk about the zone exits? I mean, thank you, defense. Thank you for, you know, getting out of that zone so cleanly 99% of the time. So definitely saw improvements on that as well in the game. Well, what did we talk about yesterday? That was one of your hot takes. As soon as Dante Fabro came back, you're going to start seeing the Predators play a little bit more cleanly out of their own end. And they did. And it's funny about zone exits because I think that's one area in which the Predators really miss Dante Fabro. Yes. Uh, As as we mentioned before, we kind of think of Fabro now as a defensive guy, you know, stay at home is sort of that old cliche term for, you know, defensive defenseman, but he's not, he's a really good skater. He's a really good puck handler and he's pretty decent at making that first pass out of his own zone. Yes. Saw that, you know, just because, you know, you're not racking up the points or, you know, on the power play, that doesn't mean you don't have a pretty good skating or offensive skill set. We see the same thing with Matt Benning too. Matt Benning is a phenomenal skater, despite being known as, you know, a shot blocker defensive guy. So, you know, when, when you have guys like that, You know, defensive defensemen aren't just there to kind of block shots, take hits, be like the tough guy in front of the net. You also need them to, you know, carry the puck out of the zone. Yes. Play, elude a forecheck. And that to me is why Fabro is so valuable is he is, you know, a very underrated skater. Um, Mm -hmm. Maybe, no, that's that's too much of a hot take. Um, (laughs) he He is a you know, towards the top when it comes to skating on the Nashville Predators. I'll say that. Yeah. He is among the best on the team. And he's had a very different development than a lot of the defensemen in the Predators system. You know, Dante Fabro came in, really didn't spend a ton of time in the development system. He was kind of thrown in and you know, it's been a different, he's had a different kind of avenue to his playing time, but I think he really has grown into it well. So good for Dante Fabro. The other person that I do think we need to give a shout out to, of course, is UC Soros. Had as his, always. as always, I mean, it's the thing that we say every episode, every game recap. UC Soros had his 100th career win last night, which I mean, we're so proud of him. We're so proud of our little Finn. Yes. Um, the one he had one save in this game that was literally pipe to pipe. I mean, and it was one of those where both my husband and I were like, Oh, yep. Goal. Yeah. And just flawless execution. He stopped 30 of 32 shots. He is in the zone. You know, there's just not an area of his game where he is not solid right now. So how fortunate are the Nashville predators to have UC Saros in net? 
Yeah, it's funny because the first period is when he gave up those two goals. Mm-hmm. The first period also where he made arguably one of his best saves of the year, too. Yes. Like across that just, you know, cross crease pipe to pipe goal or stop you were mentioning. Yes. Uh, and, and yeah, I mean, what else can you say about UC Saros that we haven't already said on this podcast a million times is he's just firing on all cylinders right now. He is by far the Predators. Ooh, maybe this is a different topic. I was going to say maybe the Preds most valuable player. And I think I stick to that. I think yeah. he is the most valuable player on the team this season. Um, but, but we'll have yeah. to come back to that. Um, yeah. That feels like a thing we need to, we need to discuss. Well, we are at the halfway point of the season. So, you know, yeah. Uh, Ellie Tolvanen back in the lineup last night after a COVID related battle. What'd you think of his performance? Um, it was a little, you know, what's funny and I hate to say this, but I forgot that he was back until partway through the game. Uh, yeah. Would have liked to see a little bit more. It's he seemed a little bit quiet um, and his line was generating, you know, was generating some things, but uh, it took a little bit for me to really notice, Hey, we've got Tolvi back. So be that as it may. Uh, always good, though, to have him back. He's somebody you want on the ice, for sure. Yeah, agree. Uh, a little bit of a quiet night, mm-hmm. I think, moving in. Um, and I don't know if that's just he's still trying to get his legs back. Um, you know, he he didn't practice until today or yesterday before the game. Yeah. Uh, so, I mean, it could be just one of those things where he's, you know, just trying to get his legs under him still. Um, you know, COVID knocks you out sometimes. So Yes. Um, yeah, we'll, yeah, we'll have to see if maybe the Preds start giving them a little bit more ice time, make it more of a gradual thing. Uh, cause yeah. he only played about 10 minutes last night. So yeah, yeah. We'll see. the week, the all-star week, I think is really gonna, that's gonna work in Tolvanen's favor for sure. As far as recovering and kind of getting his sea legs back. Um, but speaking of uh, recovering, we're going to talk about how, yeah, there's no good segue for this one. So we're going to just <laughs> dive in. There's no good segue recovering. We're going to dive into the Western Conference. We're going to talk about who the Preds do want to play and don't want to play. And yeah, how are we going to recover maybe from some of the losses we've had against Western Conference teams? But first, <laughs> I love the recovery. Did you like that? I I, yeah. I knew it was there. I just had to work for it. First, we want to let you know that our friends at Bet Online have you covered this season with more props, odds, and lines than ever before as football continues its march through the playoffs right to the big game coming up in just a couple weeks. BetOnline.net remains the best spot for all of your sports scores, podcasts, and news this season. And it's not just football. BetOnline has up-to-the-minute info on all pro and college hoops, NHL, of course, boxing, UFC, along with live, real-time updates of current games. Don't wait to take advantage of all the new amazing offers available for the 2022 season. BetOnline where the game starts yeah super bowl time man oh my goodness i know it's going to be so exciting it is already insane here in uh the southwest ohio area in the natty yes natty yeah um yeah western conference speaking of playoffs and championships and whatnot so what we did today for western conference wednesday we kind of hit on this a little bit yesterday. We were looking through some of the Preds' possible playoff opponents. Uh, we we're going to go through one team we would love to face, one mm-hmm. team we think we could instantly beat in the first round or just anywhere, and <laughs> one team we would like to avoid at all cost. There's one caveat. Oh. We made a rule. We cannot pick Colorado. <laughs> Can't pick Colorado because that was going to wind up being both of our answers. So right. I guess this is the second team you don't want to face at all costs. Um, even though the Predators have beaten Colorado twice, um, I, I still don't think you want to play them. No, no, I that would definitely be my first answer. But I do have a second answer. My second answer, and this is interesting uh, for a team that I don't want to play because let's face it, they're still kind of 
in and out, up and down on, you know, whether they're going to make the playoffs. And I think that they will is the Calgary flames, believe it or not. And here's why Calgary flames are like a box of chocolates. You never know what you're going to get. You know, you may need, uh, you, you could beat them in a two goal game. Or you may need seven goals to beat them because depending on which team takes the ice, they can be an offensive powerhouse. Uh, Defensively, they play very sound. They can kind of smother you. They've got some decent goaltending going. So the Calgary Flames are just such an anomaly. If they're hot, they're hot. Uh, If they're not, you can beat them, but you just don't know. So for me, um, I'd rather, I'd, I'd like the devil I know better than the devil I can't quite pin down. Yeah, and that's an interesting one because the Flames are second in the Pacific when it comes to points percentage. Mm -hmm. They have been up or down. It's going to be interesting to see them versus Vegas down the stretch. Um, Because, yeah, this is this year two teams that I think can go in either direction at this point. Vegas, we assume, is going to be better um, Mm -hmm. because they have Jack Eichel coming down the road. Um, So they've got, you know, they don't even have to make a move at the deadline and they're going to have a big boost. Although they actually might have to make a move at the deadline because of salary cap reasons, but that's a different topic. Yeah. Uh, But yeah, Calgary right now, I I don't know what to make of them either. So that's kind of an interesting pick. Yeah. Uh, One for me, Anne, and I kind of went back and forth between two teams on this. Okay. Realistically, when it comes to possible Preds first round opponents, Mm-hmm. One team I'm not sure I want to see is the Minnesota Wild. Interesting, yes. Now, the Predators have beaten the Wild this season. And I think mm-hmm. even people said yesterday, um, you know, the Wild doesn't scare me that much. And then I kind of started digging into them a little bit more. And the thing that scares me about the Wild is they kind of remind me of Winnipeg back in 2018. Yes. Uh, they kind of remind me a little bit of the Hurricanes last year, mm-hmm. where it's just kind of elite goaltending, elite defense, and then, uh, you know, not the deepest offensive team, but a lot of players up front who can kind of make plays, a lot of under the radar players, so to speak. No, uh, yeah, I would agree. Yeah. Uh, Kaprizov is you know, maybe one of the best players in the NHL right now. And yeah, he won the Calder last year, but I don't think there's a lot of people necessarily like that, you know, he comes to mind when you think of like the best players in the NHL, not unlike Sebastian Ajo last year. So right, uh, the Wild are a team that I think is somebody that I would want to avoid if I'm the Preds. Yeah. Now, what's interesting is I agree with absolutely everything you say there about the Minnesota Wild, but I had them in my potentially want to play because I because I think it's a great gauge for how your team is, because I, I feel like. I think your comparison to the Hurricanes last year is dead on with Minnesota. And I think how you match up against them really is kind of a great gauge for where is your team and how deep will they go. Now, would they be my first pick to play? No, my first pick that I would want to play are the Anaheim Ducks. And straight up because I know that we could probably beat them and because that rivalry runs so deep and there is just so much emotional baggage with the Ducks here in Nashville that it would just be insane. It would be a fun series. And they've never beaten Nashville in a playoff series. Yep. So why not go with Anaheim? Yeah, I just think that's a... That's a, in it, and it's funny to me because that's not a team I think of when I think, ooh, rivalry game. And yet, ooh, bad blood. And it's really a beautiful thing to behold. So I would, I would pick uh, Anaheim because I think it'd be a great first round boost to uh, beat them and carry some good momentum and energy into the next round. Yeah. I feel like we're not going to see Anaheim one way or the other. Yeah. No, uh, we're probably not. I feel like, you know, I don't know if they're going to win the Pacific. Um, And, you know, I don't think the Preds are going to see them in the Western Conference final. They're not. I guess you can kind of say that against anybody in the Pacific Division, though, right? I mean, that's, you know, a train wreck this year. 
<laughs> the Central is amazing. It's amazing this year. Just such a great competition. And then there's the Pacific. Yeah, well, it was uh, the wild stat somebody brought up yesterday. Uh, the top four teams in the Central Division all have more points than the current leaders of the Pacific. Or, um, yeah, the Central Division have more points than the current leaders of the Pacific Division. Yes. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, you might see two wild cards come from the Central. You know, that's kind of how crazy it is. Yeah. Um, I'm going to go a little bit. I'm going to try to be realistic a little bit on this. Okay. Of play and think of teams the Preds might legitimately see down okay. the road. Um, I would not mind a matchup with the St. Louis Blues. Really? Here's why. Uh, the Predators, A, have kind of had the Blues number over mm -hmm. the past handful of seasons. It's a team that, for whatever reason, the Predators kind of seem to have a little bit of a mental edge over them a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, and two, I think of the Preds' possible opponents. They're the ones that I like the matchup with the most. Um, you know, I think they kind of play two clashing styles. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, they're, they're both, you know, physical defensive teams. But I think the Predators kind of have a little bit more pop up front. And I think that's where they have – the advantage. Um, I trust Forsberg, Duchesne, um, Johansson, Granlund to make more plays than what St. Louis has now. And yeah, you know, they have Vladimir Tarasenko, always mm -hmm. good. Uh, Brighton Chen, always good. But, you know, I, I do think, you know, I do think the Preds match up against them well. I think they're kind of two similar teams, but I think the Preds have the edge a mm -hmm. lot when it comes to offense. Plus, I think UC Saros has a big edge over Jordan Bennington. Oh, I would agree with that. And, you know, when we're talking straight up realistic, I would agree. I think if you're looking at possible matchups, that's the the most favorable one for Nashville. Not that Nashville couldn't handle some other, you know, some of the other teams, of course. But I would agree with you. I I I, I can I cannot argue with that. And I think a lot of that boils down to goaltending. I think, like you said, UC Saros can out goaltend uh, what they've got. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Uh, Winnington isn't exactly a thing in St. Louis that much. Yeah, anyway. just averaging, averaging ten. Yeah. Yes. Fine. Finington. There you go. There we go. <laughs> Um, we want to know what you guys at home think. Uh, tweet us at LO underscore Predators. That's our podcast Twitter handle. Uh, and let us know if there's a team that you do or don't want to face uh, in the playoffs this year if you're the Nashville Predators. Kind of curious to see what the feedback on this is. In the meantime, though, and where can the people find your work online? You can find my work at on the four check.com and you can find me on Twitter at and K underscore mama on ice. You can find my work at on the four check.com as well. Follow me on Twitter at underscore NS Morgan. That's going to do it for us today on the locked on predators podcast. Thank you for making us your first listen of the day. We will be back tomorrow with some Olympic talk. Stay tuned for that.